So if you think about a fictitious mid-sized company called telecom.com and what it is that they need out of the kinds of technology and services that we're talking about. If we, if we take Dorothy, who doesn't look like your avid social networker, right? I mean, she's got a job to do. And that's, that's what I think gets lost sometimes when we look at all the trends and the technology and all the kinds of things that we talk about. I think those of us who are really close to it, we get really excited about all the new stuff and what's happening and all this. And the thing that I think we need to come back to is that there are businesses out there that are run on profit and they're trying to make decisions. So when we talk about what the search for meaning is, it, getting the meaning is only important because we then can make a decision once we understand it. And that's really what we want to focus on is we want to focus on not just measurements to get reporting, because reports are interesting, but no one really does anything with them. Right? What you really want to do is get answers to your questions. What you really want to do is you want to say, what is it that I need to do now, and how can I use the measurements to help me decide what to do? And so let's go through a scenario of how these things play out. So Dorothy's looking at her reputation dashboard one morning. Oh, you guys don't all have a reputation <laughs> dashboard? See, that's one of the things that has to change, right? It has to be something that's simple enough that someone who isn't a guru is able to figure out, okay, I can see what's going on. I can see what the conversation is about my company today. And it has to be this simple, right? It has to be something where green dots mean it was a good story and red dots mean it was a bad story, right? It has to be something that's simple, right? She's an executive, it has to be really simple, right? <laughs> so, and what does she see? What she sees is a bad story. She sees something that she wishes she wasn't seeing. So it says questionable telecom total cost of ownership. And so if you're in the telecom business, this is bad, right? Because it's saying our products are really expensive. They cost people too much. This is bad for us. And so what she wants to do is figure out what's going on with this story. Why did this happen? And so the first thing to think about is that there was a lot of technology behind it. Right? It's so, yes, there's this whole social media blogosphere, blah, 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 right? We have to come up with new words for everything to make them complicated so we can charge more for whatever our expertise is on, right? But there's all this stuff going on out there, and there is a community, and there is all these people talking, but the other thing that has to happen is no one could possibly keep up with all of that. Right? In the old days of PR, you, you know, the agency could give you your clip book every month and you could read through them and see what was going on. I mean, you couldn't possibly keep up with all this stuff the old-fashioned way. And so what has to happen now is that just like search engines are out there crawling and spidering and doing all this great stuff to find all the content so people can find it, well, this is what has to happen when you're trying to understand what your reputation is too. Every day there has to be these, these robots out there trolling and finding all these nuggets. But they have to do a lot more than that. What they have to do is they have to analyze them to make sure, first of all, that they're showing you a story that's about you. They also have to make sure that they're showing you something and give, giving you an opinion as to whether they think it was positive or negative or neutral. And because that helps you to understand what's being said. And they can also aggregate these things and say, well, your percentage of positive stories are higher now than they were, so whatever you've been doing in the last month, it's probably a good thing. So anyway, so Dorothy wants to learn more about this. So what she does is she takes a look at that story, just like any of us would. And so then the question is, so how did the technology know that this story was a bad story? Well, there's a lot of magic involved. One of the things it does is it looks at things like the word telecoms claim. Well, claims, unless you're in the insurance business, claims is usually kind of a negative aspersion, right? It's saying, well, they claim this, but if they really believed you, they wouldn't call it a claim, right? They would just say, this is true. So that's a bad word. They're questioning claims. Products can be costly. So there's all sorts of words in there that are kind of negative. And so the technology understands, well, this is kind of a negative story. And so it does this with dozens, hundreds, maybe thousands of stories if you're a really large company, every day, week, month, whatever the right period is for you when you want to look at things. 
and it's understanding what kind of things you need to know to make a decision. So this is something that's been surfaced and something that can be shown to the person who can do something about it. So this is, so at this point, the person is still bringing some meaning to it, which is something that's possible to do when it's only one story. So she saw a story, she's interested, she's reading it. So then what happens next is she asks the kind of question that most people would ask, is this just an aberration? Is this just one person saying something? Is it just somebody out there with a gripe or an extra <coughs> mind? And I don't really have to make any decision based on this because I only really care if there are lots of people doing it. So how does she find that out? So one way she could find out is to say, well, I'm gonna create a concept that I'm gonna check on that more. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna look at this more deeply. So she highlights TCO, she says, I'm gonna create a concept, and when she does that, it says, you know, there are a lot of other concepts you can apply to this too. So here's some more phrases that might have to do with total cost of ownership. Which of these do you care about? So she doesn't really care about training costs, even though that raises ownership, because that's not what the blogger's complaining about. But she cares about a big repair bill, she cares about costly repairs, she cares about all these kinds of things. And so she wants to ask about that. And she wants to ask about it in conjunction with her products. So she wants to know about brand names, product names. Those are the things that she cares about. And these are concepts that have already been created because she already has the dashboard up. She's already gone through the work of doing that or her agency has done it or her programmers have done it or whoever's in charge have done some of these things. So she's gonna take advantage of that. And what happens when she does this? What happens is she finds out how many other people are talking about these things. And she finds that it's not that isolated. There's been 17 different posts on message boards within the last period. Some of them say that their products are expensive to fix, or they have high maintenance costs, or they have pricey service. So there's all these phrases that seem to correlate to the kinds of things that she's concerned about. So now she's saying, okay, maybe I really do have a problem. Maybe I do have to make a decision. But before she does that, she says to herself, well, is this just us? Is it just telecom's problem? Or is this something that people are starting to complain about in the entire industry? So is what I'm really seeing not that my company has done something wrong, but that maybe customer sensibilities are changing. Maybe what's happening is that everybody is starting to get a little fed up with how expensive this stuff is. They used to be okay with it, but they're, they're changing what they want. And so now I'm starting to notice this in terms of complaints. So I'm starting to look at some, some changes in my customer base. And so what she wants to do is do the same thing she did before, except now she wants to look at competitors. Now she wants to look and see what are the, what are the things that are happening there. And lo and behold, what she finds is that there's a lot of talk about this. Not, it's not just her products, it's lots of people's products. And customers really are starting to change their minds. Customers are starting to say, I want more than I was getting before. What you were doing used to be okay, but now I'm not that happy with it. So now she's ready to make a decision. Maybe, there's not a lot she can do about the product, right? The product's been designed, built out there. But maybe what she can do is make a marketing decision and say, hey, maybe it's time to sell more warranties. Maybe I can make the cost of ownership something consistent and stable and projectable and understandable and something that doesn't hit people at the wrong time. Maybe that's something I can do. So I'm gonna start looking at all of my different kinds of warranties and I'm gonna try and sell those a lot harder. Maybe I'm gonna bundle some of them into the price and make the warranty even longer. So there's all sorts of decisions she can make. 